So I'm hoping that today will be a good day because uh, I've already come across some deer. I don't know if camera is picking them up. There's a baby and I'm guessing two parents or something like that. Across the field over there. They just run across the road. Both directions. But um, we're back to the same place. Let's see, are they still here? Oh, bastards. I wish I had the camera rolling. I figured I shouldn't videotape the thing that I've already drove across and of course, as luck would have it, missed the deer. Only goes to say never turn your camera off. But yeah, this is the same place uh, that we've been to uh, yesterday. A little on the soggy side, but hey, is what it is. See, in case you're wondering what was that all about, uh, that's the sort of uh, fun I get to have when entering uh, privately available uh, fishing ground. And so, a uh, bit of off-roading. That's one of the reasons why I have a 4x4. Finally get to put it to good use. So, um, look around me. Finally, finally, there is no rain. That's right, there is no rain. And uh, in the forecast, if you could say that, uh, they're saying 10 to 20% chance. Now, I'm going to take that at face value and trust them. Although looking at some clouds, I don't know about that. And look at this. We finally get a ramp. That's not a crazy 45 degree ramp. How about this? There's an alligator over there, another one right around the corner there. The downside to places like this is that they weren't really designed for kayaks. Um, even for boats, I mean, once you get it in the water, how the heck are you supposed to climb onto it? And so this is one of those weird questions you have to answer. Because it, like, it's deceptive. It gets extremely deep right behind this vegetation. Like, it just goes all the way down deep. So. Um, happy to say that my uh, Lowrance installation on the kayak uh, is going well. I decided to space it out between uh, a couple of trips. Uh, and reason why is because I, I ran into a bit of an issue. Um, now for most kayakers this is not an issue per se. But um, I do have a um, trailer specifically designed for multiple kayaks. If you don't have any of this stuff on the top, this is not going to be an issue. But by default, um, I'll get to the duct tape in a minute. By default, um, people either install it here or they install it there, right? And then it sticks out here. Now, if, if you leave it there, it's going to hit those metal pieces when you launch in the water. Now, um, when I was buying a kayak, obviously I had a choice. Do I buy a single um, trailer kayak or do I buy a kayak for, I, I mean a single uh, kayak trailer or multiple? And the choice was pretty obvious actually, uh, considering how many kayaks I have and considering my long term plans for upgrading my RV and everything like that, you know, between the paddle boards and all the other stuff, it just kind of makes sense. The only downside is have to. Um, Remove the chair, have to remove the um, the Mirage drive. Thankfully the Bimini um, could squeeze in here. Oh, by the way, yeah, I did get myself a Bimini. Surprise! Um, believe it or not, I was able to find one on Amazon. And this Bimini, with shipping and everything, cost me 90 bucks. 
not 250 not 300 bucks but 200 bucks and uh, all it is is it actually bolts on to your rails um i have the older style hobie i feel old even saying that you know they they essentially changed the rail system from around to um multi-angle one on their um kayaks between 2014 and going forward so this is a 2014 model but nevertheless what i've done is i put some duct tape around it um because otherwise this spacing up here is a little bit too big so but uh some duct tape around it and all of this is just really a bolt on exercise um and you know what i'm gonna make a separate video on how i've installed this thing uh, i guess post installation uh, coverage but the way this works is it's always to the back and then once you launch uh, all you do is you take the front straps and you attach them to your eye hooks or whatever those things are called um, and then with respect to low rents and everything I'm gonna figure out what to do about that um, my other addition to this are ammo tackle boxes um, and what I do is you could put bottles in there and my goal is to actually keep uh, bricks of ice in there so uh, off on the inside I'm gonna install a battery and then um, well you've seen everything else It may not be too perfect but you get the gist you, you see what's happening with the ramp they're all like wow they're not like your professionally designed fancy ramp i know this will sound uh, rather corny but uh one of the benefits to coming out to places like this is that um you know especially after the, la the last just absolutely horrible 10 months of my life between the physical therapy and then all the uh, family related uh, things and uh, friends diagnosed with things and just a relatively shitty year altogether uh, it actually you know coming out to places like this actually makes you feel like a human being for a chance um, to most people this may not be significant enough but you know uh, this is a bit of a milestone if anything uh, just being able to come out uh, you know actually enjoy your life again uh, you know spending 10 months in physical therapy is really not something anybody wants to do um, and the worst part about it is when you're going through that process you know you're you're expecting incremental changes and just a very horrible chapter in my life but now that i'm here i actually get to enjoy stuff like this um so right now i'm sitting under a actually you know what let me get my other gopro right now i'm sitting under a bimini and man what a world of change it does it like it is just horribly hot outside it's probably about 96 degrees under the bimini um, easily 20 degrees cooler uh, just out of reach of camera there's a couple of juvenile uh, gray blue herons and um, what they do is they keep me in their eyesight and they just keep jumping and uh, flying from place to place to place so as i navigated this corner um, they took the liberty to rub it in my face once again and moved um they're actually sitting in that bush over there so um interesting thing uh i just came back from uh, new jersey and uh we were at 
uh, one of the local New Jersey parks. And, you know, obviously birds migrate. So I kind of assume that, you know, that's universal of the birds. You know, you would think that if, you know, if a great deal of them migrates, then a whole bunch of them migrates. Well, apparently not. Uh, there's a whole bunch of great blue herons in New Jersey. It, it caught me by surprise because I figured, hey, you know, uh, this time of year, nesting territory, all that funny stuff. Well, actually, maybe what's happening is now, now that it's getting hot, they're migrating back. Because, you know, birds nest here during uh, winter time. You know, they have their babies early in the spring and then they fly back. So maybe they're actually migrating from here over there. Um, some of the things that don't really migrate, but they like to spread themselves all over the place are alligators. Once again, we are followed by an alligator. Here's another one. Whoops. He's like, yo, what you doing, man? You know, interesting thing. Just absolutely no fear of humans. None whatsoever. We're talking less than 20 feet. And that, my friends, is the difference between uh, being in a... Oh, look at that. He's like, eh, I didn't get enough of a breath. Look at that guy. He's trying to look a lot bigger than he actually is. Arching his back, showing us that he is the boss. Look at that. That's the difference between um, alligators out in the wild and alligators out in the parks. You know, people constantly say, oh, alligators don't bother us. Alligators are afraid of people. Well, no, they're not. Clearly, you can see. I mean, look what he is doing. He is actually turning towards me. You know, if this was a public park, he'd be swimming away from me. That, my friends, is the difference between... Between the wild... Look at him. Beautiful animal. Just absolutely spectacular. Camera obviously doesn't do it justice. Wow. Absolutely. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, this is the difference between the wild alligator and the park alligator. This one knows that he is the boss of the land. Look at that. Enough fun. If you see right behind me, there's plenty of channels. Like every single hole that you see is where the alligator lives. So they sit there in the bush, 
uh, nobody bothers them uh, and they actually it's a well-traveled path for them they they probably what they do is they get up on the bank where you see all those trees and uh, just checking where the alligator is and uh, then they slither into the water depending on the climate and everything if it's hot if it's hot um, I've actually seen them scale 45 degree inclines about 200 feet away from the closest water. Um, I have a picture from like six or seven years ago when we were mountain biking. And, uh, you know, we're standing right next to it, like 20 feet away. And that sucker gets up and all of us just <laughs> step back, for lack of better words. Um, he was big and probably, I don't know, nine feet maybe, eight, nine feet. So alligators are found really all over the place. Um, some of them as north as North Carolina out of all things. Yeah, if you've been watching news, uh, they're constantly talking about how like, you know, nine or 12 foot alligator was walking casually through some golf course over there or knocking on somebody's door. Here's a good example. If you well, there's an alligator right there, but right behind them there's a nest. Wow. Okay, that explains why the other one was giving me that stink eye. Uh, that's a mama. Right between. Obviously, I'm not gonna get close. I'm not stupid. Uh, but she is guarding the nest. Right in that little U over there, there's a nest. Um, and what they do is they pile it. Uh, with leaves and other stuff and they lay a whole bunch of eggs in it um, usually between uh, like 60 to 90 eggs and there's this uh, crucial temperature for uh, alligators if the alligator is at and I don't remember what that temperature is but it's it's like a one or three degree spread so for example if it's you know, if it's like 98 degrees, then it's like a boy. If it's like 101, then it's a girl or vice versa. And something like vast majority of them are really only one sex. Uh, and interestingly, uh, to add to that is like 99% of alligators uh, don't reach maturity. Uh, a great deal of them are actually killed within their first year. A um, whole bunch more are killed within the first couple of years you know once they outgrow the initial period of anything from raccoons to uh, other critters trying to eat them uh, the only other predator for them uh, becomes at least in this area become other alligators uh, now if we were in the jungle uh, it would be like jaguars and things like that anacondas but this is Florida uh, so the only other native well uh, imported predator let's let's be um, have to say it exactly how it is uh, the pythons uh, one of the reasons why there's such a call to exterminate all the pythons in Everglades is because they're uh, destroying populations of uh, alligator American Mississippis uh, and the uh, American saltwater crocodile in the Everglades so that would be the only other predator on them. And of course, once they grow really big, the only, um, the only way they ever are really put into any danger are people um, and uh, other alligators, like if they're fighting over the territory or something like that. Uh, the bigger alligators are missing limbs and broken jaws and missing tails and... Um, and feet and everything. Here's another mama over there. Oh wow! You know what? I'm I'm glad that I came here because I've I've never actually seen a nest with my naked eyes. Um, I had an opportunity a few years ago to uh, be privy to uh, birth of little alligators, but unfortunately scheduling placed me on the other side of the continent. So I'm gonna see if I could pull some strings and uh, 
get myself on, on like an alligator farm or something so that I could show it to you guys. I have held an alligator before. I, and if you watch one of my previous videos from the Keys, uh, on the way to the Keys we stopped at the alligator farm. <laughs> that great blue hair and was like, oh, I'm just gonna take this branch. Scare the crap out of egret. He actually landed on another egret. There's another egret in the tree over there. I am so done with those jungles. After the last trip, I am not gonna put myself into that position ever again. I mean, it makes for a really cool shot, but for all the effort of trying to get myself out of that bind uh -uh. turns into a jungle it would be nice if there were channels through it but you know this being a privately owned in lands nobody is really going to develop it like that how's this charm Look at that pretty reflection of the clouds. You know that it's hot as hell when every single alligator in this lake is swimming. Um, alligators are the kind of animals that, um, or reptiles rather, that really don't want to be exerting energy you know it takes energy for them to move and they really don't like exerting energy and so far after circling the lake uh, there's so many swimming alligators it's just mind-boggling I mean they're so hot that they're trying to stay cool by literally trying to find colder water pockets in this lake Uh, the ambient temperature right now is probably like 90 something going up and it just the water temperature itself is probably high I don't want to put my hand in the water but if I had to guess mid 80s maybe so it's far cooler for them to be in the water there's another one that you see there off in the background. take me another I don't know how many tries to get perfect but you know what every ramp is different so I have that excuse you see like even here it's all slanted in everything you know maybe if I didn't have that thing in the back which I have to the, the problem is you would think that they um, bolt us on but they haven't they've used bolts for everything else except for this <laughs> 